So, a background to lupus very, very quickly. What I'm going to talk about in this clinic is patients. And in my Tuesday clinic, which I'm going to talk about after the lunch break, I'm going to talk about a, just a small group of selected patients to lessen what we're, what we're learning about. So here's a young girl, Molly, aged 14. Uh, from Clonakilty in Ireland. And she was found wandering around the city of Cork, uh, emptying dustbins and, and behaving in a, in a very uh, abnormal way. This is Clonakilty. It's got one of the nicest beaches in Southern Ireland uh, along the coast of County Cork. And luckily for her, she had a butterfly rash. And she was diagnosed very quickly as lupus. She also had other features of lupus, which included hair loss. She was found to have strongly positive DNA antibodies, low complement, but no renal disease. And it was assessed that she had lupus with neuropsychiatric involvement. She was treated, uh, psychiatric drugs, uh, prednisone, uh, azathioprine, with no great immediate response. Ultimately, she was treated more strongly with pulse cyclophosphamide, uh, 500 milligrams. We don't use the American doses, which cause uh, infertility. We use what we call the St. Thomas's regime. And luckily, there was cerebral improvement, quite, quite dramatic in her case. And within two years of the onset of her illness, a slow progress, if you like, there was both clinical and serological improvement. What's this 14-year-old girl telling us, what's, what's her long-term prognosis? Well, she's now 44 and she's a professor of history in Cambridge. Has left no damage, whatever. Uh, I see her once a year, her, her, her lupus is quiescent. So it just shows how s silly we are, how little we know about the long-term prognosis uh, of quite severe, in her case, neuropsychiatric illness uh, and interestingly, often in the presentation of lupus, the neuropsychiatric aspects uh, are dominant. What's the lesson from her? Well, we don't know how common CNS involvement is in lupus. And this is where the, f the fiction comes in. There are so many different figures. I go back to um, a an interesting year that I spent on secondment in Jamaica, <laughs> suffering hard, as they say in Jamaica. The, the, um, I was on loan from the Hammersmith Hospital to set up um, in the University of the West Indies a, a rheumatology and lupus unit, and they had a lot of lupus in Jamaica. And we saw quite a few women in the lupus clinic who had been in the neuropsychiatric hospital. And if any of you have been there, it's straight out of Charles Dickens. It's a horrendous place. But with two med students, we did blood tests on uh, 500 females. We just did ANA testing. And 34% of all the inmates um, had a strongly, a weak, moderate, strongly positive ANA. Now, there are many causes of positive ANA, but obviously there are a few of those women in the Jamaican mental hospital whose diagnosis was probably lupus. And it got us even more interested in the possibility that uh, we're seeing in the neuropsychiatric world lupus patients. And I was talking to our host last night about a pair of identical twins I have, one with West Indies girls in London, one with severe lupus, and her identical twin who's at the Maudsley Hospital with schizophrenia. Well, what are the figures? My old boss, Chuck Christian with Estes, they wrote a classic paper saying that, in their view, cerebral involvement occurred in 60% of lupus patients. Um, and, and that figure may well be true. What do we know about the causes of neuropsychiatric lupus? Well, this is another paper, much more recent, in the journal Lupus. And this comes from uh, Jarper and colleagues. They, they found major depressive episodes in 21%, mood disorders in 
anxiety disorders in 15, and suicidal risk. Now, please don't challenge me on definitions because it, it's not my topic, but these are the sort of figures that have been published in the, in the lupus and rheumatology world. Very recently, the, annual, uh, the ACR meeting a month ago, this brings us really up to date. This is a paper presented at the ACR in Atlanta. I, I wasn't there, but this is one of the abstracts. They looked at 519 SLE patients. Over 40% uh, were not screened, but uh, were screened, it should say, sorry. Amongst those, 18% had depression, so a widely differing figure. And this came at the same meeting uh, at Buenos Aires, the World Lupus Conference. Again, I, I wasn't there, this is an abstract from it. And what they concluded was that depression in lupus had only a marginal contribution to the cognitive impairment, which is so common in lupus, uh, suggesting that different pathogenic mechanisms drive this neuropsychiatric manifestation in this autoimmune disease. So there are many, many studies coming out. This is another recent paper in lupus, the development of a simple questionnaire to screen patients with lupus for the presence of neuropsychiatric symptoms in routine uh, practice. Um, this is volume 20 uh, in 2011. For those of you who, who would like the reference, I can see you later. Other neuropsychiatric features are now well described. Uh, including abnormal sense of smell. This is paper by Appenzeller at the same Buenos Aires lupus meeting. They looked at 200 lupus patients and found decreased sense of smell in 56% as, composed, as opposed to controls. Um, and about four years ago, the American College of Rheumatology, which is the official college of, of rheumatologists, came out with a suggested nomenclature for neuropsychiatric lupus syndromes. And this is a very widely quoted work published in the, the rheumatology journal, Arthritis and Rheumatism, in April 1999. Now, again, it's huge and it really is very detailed. 19 syndromes that you can get. Well, I, I'm not a syndrome man and I really, I find my eyes blur when I, when I read this, and I'm not sure how helpful it is, even for those of us studying lupus. But there it is. That's what the rheumatology and lupus world uh, follow at the moment. Um, and it includes pretty well the whole of neurology. Yeah.